It means you have perfected your faith. And if you have perfected your faith, inshallah ta'ala, on the day of resurrection, you'll be granted paradise. The Allah count us among those who will be granted paradise on the day of judgment. Inshallah. Uh, MSSN, MPI, Wallahi, you will never know how happy I am to be with you this moment. For me, I count this moment as one of the best moments of my life. The moment I'm spending within my brothers and sisters in Islam, which is the best form of brotherhood in the entire world. Allah address this type of brotherhood in the Quran. He said, Inna mu'minuna ikhwatun. He said, believers are what? Brothers. Inna mu'minuna ikhwatun. He said, believers are what? Brothers. Look at the brotherhood in the campus. People from different angles of this country meeting together in a particular place, participating in their religion, regardless of their tribe and whatever. Alhamdulillah. This is uh, the practical of what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the Quran. That we are brothers. Alhamdulillah for being brothers and Alhamdulillah for being in your midst. Why I'm happy is this type of gathering is of two parties, the party of Allah and the party of Shaitan. Today, inshallah, we that gather here, we are among the party of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because who are the party of Satan? The other party is what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described them in the Quran. He said, Istahwada alayhum shaytan fa'ansahum dhikra Allah ulaika hizbu shaytan ala inna hizba shaytan humun khasirun He said, Istahwada alayhum shaytan that the Satan, the devil has overtaken he has taken over their sanity who are those that the, the devil has taken over their sanity? Who are those? There are those that don't believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Or, still part of them, those who claim to be Muslims and do not take part in Muslim activities. They are just Muslim by name. They are just Muslim by their speech. But in practical, in their actions, you never see Islam in it. This type of people, Satan has taken over their sanity. They don't reason anymore. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Ula'ika hizbu shaitan. Those are the party of shaitan. They partner with shaitan to spray evil, mischief on earth. Anywhere anything good is going on, they will never party to it. And you will never see them. Rather, they will discourage people from it. Those are the party of Shaitan. They are the agent of Shaitan. Allah, then Allah said, listen very carefully, so that you should not be party to that type of party. Allah said, Allah, listen very well. Inna hizba shaytan, the party of the satan. Humul khasirun, they are the losers. They are the losers. They lose their life. They lose everything they have. Then in their grave, they are the losers. They receive series of punishment. On the day of resurrection, they will dwell in the hellfire. May Allah protect us from them. And may Allah not make us one of this party. Then the second party is the party of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
Allah described them still in the same surah. He described his own party. He said, there are those who believe in me and they act righteously. He promised them of Jannah. At the end, he said, those type of people will are eager his Allah. They are the party of Allah. Because anything, anywhere, at any place at all, that any of Allah's activities is going on, they are party to it. In word, they are party to it. In action, they are party to it. In kind and cash, they are party to it. Anything that is that of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah said, Ulaika is Allah. They are my own people. They are my own party. Their campaign is for me. And Allah said, Allah, listen very carefully. In the Hezbollah, the party of Allah, who will move the point? They are the successful ones. The Allah comes us among them. So this gathering is part of the gathering of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That every soul is supposed to be part of. This is the type of gathering that you should fight yourself, fight your desires. Make it your primary assignment on earth. It's part of your primary. This type of gathering. Because if you belong to this gathering, you lose nothing and you have achieved everything. Why do you think of a gathering that from the beginning of it till the end of it, you earn nothing but reward? Why do you think of such gathering? A gathering that you're sitting alone, your sins will be forgiven. What do you think of such gathering? This is a gathering the Muslims should be part of it. That is why I am happy to be among this gathering this morning. How I wish I can be coming every week. May Allah give us the blessings of this gathering. Now, Alhamdulillah, our topic of discussion is benefits of attending Majari Sulaim. The benefits of attending Islamic programs. This is the topic chosen today. But before we dwell into this topic, we have to I'm going to discuss this topic based on points. I'm not going to stand only on this topic, but I have to go back, trace some points out, bring us to the reality of today, the reality of Muslims today. Then at the end, we just uh, show some light on the topic. Brothers and sisters in Islam, remember, before this society today, there was a society that existed. Before the advent of Islam, or precisely before the advent of Prophet Muhammad there was a society that existed. This very society, everything is wrong with it. That society, Everything is wrong with it. Nothing is stable at all. There is nothing good about life in that society. That is the society before Islam. That very society, there is nothing different from the animal kingdom and the human kingdom by that very time. And if you should rule, if you should, if you should pass judgment, you will discover that even the animal kingdom then were living better than the human kingdom. They were living fine that, than human beings on earth that particular time. Because all the institutions of life, nothing is good about it. Come to the religious life then, there were no religion. There is no atom 
of respect for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because everybody in the society take the dimension he choose to be. Some choose the angels as they are Allah. They worship them. Some choose stones as Allah. Palm tree as Allah. Some choose the spirits as Allah. Some worship rivers, trees, and whatever. Everybody chooses what to worship. That society was totally against Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, their creator. That was the society coming from a religious perspective. Come to human rights. No rights were given. There was suppression in the society. Women were not regarded. And the system that took this, what we know today as jungle justice, that is the fat fish eat the what? The small fish. You can only survive in that society depends on your power, your ability to defend yourself because nobody is providing security for you. Nobody is protecting your life. Nobody is protecting your property. You cannot do anyhow unless if you trust yourself. That was the society. That was the society that came before Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This is the human right perspective. Then other institution like marriage institution and the contract in the society, there were no law guiding it. Like come to marriage institution, before Islam, women are just like commodity in the market. Back then, they were just like commodity in the market. They were not regarded. Back then, if you should get married to a lady, she's just like a slave to you. You bought her. It's allowed. You can still sell her out. It's allowed in that society. If you get married to a lady, if you are tired of her, you call another person, you send her to that person. It's allowed. That was a society that women are counted into the deepest. They themselves, they are part of properties that are to be inherited. Back then, in that society, which type of society is this? Not only in the Arabic Peninsula, in the whole globe, the whole world. You go to the, uh, the culture of the Arabs, this is how women were maltreated, and this is the situation of their society. Go to India, go to China, Europe, all, uh, go to whatever. This is what they were living in. So everybody was crying, the less privileged in the society, those who don't have power, those who don't have wealth, those who are, uh, uh, that were enslaved, they were crying, their hearts were bleeding, that the fortune that brought them into life, they want that fortune to come to their help. This was their thinking. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he hear them out. He had their cry. That was when he sent Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. He sent him that go and convey my message to this earth to people. Not only the Arabs, but the whole world. Inna asallaka rahmatan lil alameen. We sent you as a mercy to the whole world. It was Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that came gradually, gradually he changed society. The religious aspect, he changed it until no idol left in Mecca. All the idols surrounding Mecca, the Kaaba, alhamdulillah, gradually, Prophet sallallahu alayhi he do away with them and it became the center of Islam today. The marriage institution 
We corrected it. Today, what is the status of women in our society? Are they not respected? I think today, women are more respected than the men who raise their status. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran. All the rights that they were denied of, Allah gave them back their rights. Today you have to go out and work hard to come and feed her. Yesterday, you can just put her in. You are less concerned about her feeding and anything that concerns her, no problem. But today, her, her right was given back to them. So, the economy itself, it was reset. The Prophet ﷺ, he touched all the faces of life. Before he died, he has three those who are to take over after him. He trained them in all aspects. They are capable. They can represent him. He trained them. Then he gave them a farewell message. Khutbah to Wada. That was the khutbah that Irbadu bin Sariya, what Allah Allah narrated to us. This khutbah is of different uh, narration. Irbad bin Sariya, what Allah Allah one of the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Wa adhana Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam al-Ibatan. He said, the Prophet preached to us one day, a kind of preaching. He said, Mawidah, that, that type of preaching, the kind of preaching that Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu presented that, that particular day, Wajilat minha, Zarafat minha al-Wayl. They had their eyes blinked. They were weeping, they were crying when Prophet was delivering that particular speech. And their heart bleeds. After the Prophet finished, and Bad Bizariya said, We say, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, Femata Muna, which advice are you going to give us? Which advice are you going to give us? The Prophet said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, said, Tarabtukum ala al-Bayda. Tarabtukum ala al-Bayda. Layluha kadahaliha. La yaziru anha illa hali. He said, as I am going, surely I'm dying. And I'm going to leave you behind. But Tarabtukum ala al-Bayda. I'm leaving you on a very bright path. A very bright path. You know, the world was in doom, based on what I explained to you before the coming of Muhammad. The world was in doom. There were no lights, isn't it? What I mean with the sunlight, when there is no food, when there is no justice, when there is no protection of life and properties. Is there light? There is no light. The world was in doom before the advent of Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But when he was living, he said, Tarabtukum ala al-Baylah. I'm leaving you in a very bright path. Layluha, each night, kanahariha, it's just like each days, meaning no difference. The path I'm leaving you on, there is no difference. Once you hold on to that path, even in the daytime, even in the nighttime, you are safe. You are safe in all angles. Prophet meant it, you are safe. If you hold on to that bright path, you are safe in all angles. And he said, No one would deviate from this path in the hari except the one in two. Except the one who is buried and is ready to perish himself. This is the one that will deviate from that particular path. This is the sermon, a, a speech given by Prophet Muhammad وسلم, to his Sahaba companions when he was living them. Now, this particular hadith, how is it related with our topic? It's related. Very, very related. The society Prophet left for us was very bright. 
everything was in order. Brothers, this particular time that Prophet Sosolama offered this speech, there are other complementaries from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the believers in that very time. Allah compliment us. He praised this very nation but those that live that particular time. That is when Allah said, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا لِتَكُونُوا شُهَدَاءَ عَلَى النَّاسِ وَيَكُونَ الرَّسُولُ عَلَيْكُمْ شَهِيدًا He said, وَكَذَلِكَ جَعَلْنَاكُمْ أُمَّةً وَسَطًا We made you the best community. We made you the best of the people. The community of the Prophet, till the last day, we still answer that name. We are part of that community. Allah has addressed that community in the past. And that address, that compliment, should also encompass us. He said, We made you the best community. The best community. Allah singled us out among all the nations that has passed. Can you count how many nations has passed through the world before our own? We are the last nation. No nation will ever rise again after this nation. But Allah said we are the best of the nations. This is a compliment. It's a praise, isn't it? It's a praise to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This same community, Allah said, Kuntum khayra ummatin ukhrijat linnas. You are the best of the people. You are the best community. Ukhrijat linnas. That Allah raises for people. That Allah conveyed for people. It means this nation, you are raised, not for yourself, but for who? For people. And what is your obligation? Ta'muruda? You enjoy what is good. You command the right. And you forbid the bad. You discourage people from doing evils. And you believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are part of our responsibility and these are the sole objective why Allah made us the best of the people. And this very nation again, there is a third verse in the Quran that Allah is describing this nation. He said, Inna hadihi ummatukum ummatan wahidan wa ana rabbukum fa'abudun. He said, Inna hadihi ummatukum. This is your brotherhood. Ummatan wahida is a single brotherhood. Your community is a single community. There is no differences. Here, the hadith is coming to back it up. La fadla li arabiyyin ala al-ajabiyyin wa la li ajabiyyin ala al-arabiyyin illa li taqwa. There is no preference. There is no preference. La fadla bayna arabiyyin ala al-ajabiyyin. Arabs are not better than non-Arabs. And non-Arabs are not better than Arabs illa li taqwa. The basis which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discriminate between people is the basis of what? at taqwa Basis of at taqwa How do you fear Allah? That is how your status will be raised. Ya ayyuhal nas, inna khalaqnaakum in dhakarin wa umtha wa ja'alnaakum shu'uban wa qaba'ila lita arafu inna akramakum inda Allahi at paakum the most honorable among you are those who are conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Consciousness of Allah is the basis of our status in the society. So the verses I read out, they are compliments to believers. We, this nation. For subhanallah, if you check our society today, the reality of the Muslims, please, these verses, are they still relating to us? Check our reality today. Are we the best people that Allah described in the Quran? 
that brotherhood described in the Quran, is that brotherhood still existing? Check the reality today. Do Muslims relate to their self as is supposed, as the princesses related to their self? Is this still happening today? This is the question we ask ourselves. Wallahi, uh, is this, all this happening is heartbroken. That I will come to FBI today. Somebody will address me with another name other than Islam. Calling ourselves names. Ignoring ourselves. Forgetting our sole objective. Today, we Muslims, we cause divisions among ourselves because we have lost our glory. We have lost the path. We have deviated from that very bright path that our Prophet Muhammad وسلم, left us. We have deviated. That is what is happening to us today. And what led to that deviation? I want to point to the linking. What led to that deviation? I take you back again. The society before Islam, the advent of Islam, when Prophet was living, can you see that the society is linked? It's linked. Before Islam, nothing good. When Prophet come, he said everything. When he was living, he hand over. You understand? He hand over everything to the companions and they continue from where he stopped. Isn't it? But now, what is the condition of today? That is what I, what I discussed with you. It wasn't like before the day. It wasn't like before. Is this society compared to the society of the companions? Is it compared to the society of the Tabi'in? Or Tabi'in Tabi'in? Is it compared? No. There was strong brotherhood then. That community, they related with yourself. They are selfless. When it comes to dealings within yourself, on top of today, everything is in our mouth. Everything is in our mouth. We are Muslims by mouth. We are Muslims by mouth. We are not practicing Islam as it's supposed. We are not practicing it in the right way. Today we ignore ourselves. We don't show concern to ourselves. The bias predecessors, they were never like that. So if we want to regain our glory, we must go back, check back to our history and stick to them. Those people, they live once in their life and they are successful. If we want to be successful, then we should emulate them. If you want to be successful, emulate the pious predecessors. Because even in the Quran, at the end, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say we should follow Prophet Muhammad, but he said we should follow the companions. Because they are the disciples of whom? Of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That is why he said, وَمَنْ يُشَاقِقِ الرَّسُولُ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا تَبَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الْهُدَى وَيَتَّبِعَ غَيْرَ سَبِيلِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ he said, Whoever disobeys the prophet, whoever disobeys the prophet, after uh, guidance has come to you from the prophet, if you disobey him again, and you deviated from the path of the believers. You take another path different from the path of the believers. All the Mufassirun, they agree that believers mentioned here are the companion. So whoever deviated from the path of the companion has deviated from the path of Muhammad. And whoever deviated from the path of Muhammad has deviated from the path of Allah. Whoever deviated from the path of Allah they are the losers. They will become the losers here and there.
So you have to take the step of the companions if we want to be successful. Now, so what is happening presently is different from where the prophet left us. But what we want to, want to trace here is why? What led to this deviation? This separation that comes within the Muslims, what are the causes? Why are Muslims so dull today? Do you know that Muslims are in the forefront of civilization back then? Are you aware of this? That all the civilization of the world, Muslims are the ones that take the world from the doom of illiteracy to the light of knowledge. They are Muslims. Step out of religion. Other secular subjects. Don't you read? They were founded by who? The Muslims. All the mathematics, the technology, whatever, go back to the history. It was traced out by the Muslims. But today, the Muslims that led the world yesterday, why have we become followers today? Today we are followers. Today we don't choose the system. The system that is uh, Nigeria is operating on, is it Islamic system? It is not. But we lose it along the way. The best form of governance the best system of governance was that of Islam. But we lost it along the way. Why? Those people in the past, they stood firm and stick to the path eh, that Prophet left us on. But we came and we deviated. Why do we deviate? The number one cause is Al-Jahlu Bidin. Al-Jahlu Bidin. The number one cause is Al-Jahlu. The lack of Islamic understanding. al thing. The lack of Islamic understanding. We not understanding our religion as a support. This is the number one cause. And for this, this is just an introduction. From here, I will step in to the main topic, which is al -ilm knowledge, seeking for knowledge, and attending Islamic programs. If illiteracy and lack of understanding of religion was the factor that led to the inferiority the Muslims are facing today, then what is the way forward? What is the way forward? Before we can discover ourselves, we miss everything from the beginning. Even our thinking, we don't think right. That is what even led to that illiteracy again. Because as human, according to FBI, I think you have people of coming here. You have objective of coming to FBI, right? And I think you are working towards that objective. You come here to study at the end of the day to be certificated, right? These are your objectives before coming to FBI. Now, you are a human being. You are a creator. You are created by somebody, right? Who created you? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The heavens, the earth, the surroundings. Who created everything? The one you are seeing, the one you are not seeing. Who created them? Do you think you will come to FBI? with objective, with purpose, and Allah will create you without purpose? You come here with a purpose, there are objectives you want to achieve, right? At the end of your stay in FBI, and you think that Allah just created you like that without purpose. Is that your thinking? This was the thinking that led us to what we are in today. We thought Allah created you, created us just like that. Hulikna Abathan. We are just created for amusement. 
This is our thinking. Not knowing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created us for a purpose. From the beginning, everything was for a purpose. Now, what is the purpose of life? Allah has identified it in the Quran. What is the purpose of life? وَمَا خَلَقْتُ الْجِنَّةِ وَالْإِنسَ إِلَّا لِعَبْدُونَ We created, eh? we created, we did not create the what? Al-Jinn, the spirits. Wal-Ins, the humans, إِلَّا لِعَبْدُونَ Just for them to come and worship me. Now, can you worship Allah without knowledge? Can you worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala without knowledge? You need to go and seek for knowledge. The knowledge of this worship. This worship that Allah created of for its purpose. This very purpose of our creation, you have to go and seek for the knowledge. That is an ibadah. What is ibadah? What ibadah entails? You need to go and study it. Learn it very well. Because any course you are studying in FBI, for every course, in every semester, there must be outline, right? There must be what? Outline. With this outline, you study ahead of your teacher, right? Now, Allah created us for Ibadah. Now, what are the outlines of this Ibadah? You need to know it. The Ibadah that we are created for, we need to know it. Assalamu alaikum, FBI students. Are they giving us the outline of Islam in our various classes? I don't think in FBI there is nothing like Islamic studies now. Okay? Nothing like Islamic studies now. So FBI, religion is out of it. Religion is not recognized in FBI. This is part of the reason why this type of institution was established. It's an evil plan, but I'm not discouraging you. They are plotted in against Islam. We are still using the platform to propagate Islam. What are we doing today? Where are we here? Where are we? We are in FBI, right? Hmm? FBI was not planned, you understand, with religion. Religion was not included. This very platform was designed against Islam, but we are still using it today to propagate Islam. I'm not doing that. So this ibadah that you were created for, what does it entail? It's something you need to know. Now, if you don't go out, if you don't mingle with the people of knowledge, how can you know what ibadah is all about? If you don't go out to mingle with Muslim brothers, if you don't go to the masjid to listen to someone, if you don't pick up your books to go and learn before the scholars, how can you know this and this knowledge that will lead us to our purpose of life? How can you know it? You can never know it. The same way, you can never anything you are studying here. It's just that you cannot stay back in your room and know everything. That is why you come here. The same way, you can never know, you understand, the purpose of your life until you go out, mingle with those who knows, so that you can acquire that knowledge from them. That is the benefit of attending Islamic programs, to boost your Islamic knowledge, your experience in Islam, your idea about Islam, to boost it, to increase it, to make correction of where you are wrong. That is why you attend Islamic programs. If you don't attend Islamic programs, you cannot know this all. So knowledge comes first before everything in Islam. Knowledge first. Allah mentioned this in Quran, Surah Muhammad. Allah mentioned this, فَعَلَمْ أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Allah said, فَعَلَمْ أَنَّهُ لا إله إلا الله واستغفر لذنبي فعلم الله سيد no no إذا سيد no this is a commandment no is a commandment meaning go and search go and look go out go and learn about لا إله إلا الله 
manifest that there is no deity worship uh, worthy to be worshipped except who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You have to identify who you are worshipping first before you start to worship. How can you identify the person you are worshipping without knowledge? Can you? You can't. So you have to go out to know Allah first. Fa'alam. You have to know first. So in the whole Quran, God did not say fast, pray, give charity, go to Hajj, do this, do that. The first thing he commands is knowledge. Relate this with the first revelations, the first verses that were re uh, revealed in the Quran. Is it not related to knowledge? This year of Vika Nadi, Khalafa. Allah says you should read. Why do you read? You read to comprehend, to understand. When you understand, then you walk upon. So Islam talks about knowledge. Knowledge has a preference over action in Islam. That is why was tagovir. Istighfar is an action to ask for forgiveness. So when you are asking for forgiveness, this is an action coming from you. Who are you asking? Then you need to know that Allah first before you act. So knowing Allah is knowledge. Then seeking for forgiveness is an action coming from you. So the person you are directing your action to, you have to know that person first. And to know that person, is to go out and seek for the knowledge. Where do you huh, receive this knowledge from? Islamic gardens. Islamic gardens. This is where uh, you keep yourself enlightened about your religion. So knowledge first. That is why the Prophet وسلم, made it compulsory on every Muslim that they must go and seek for what? For knowledge. He said, Al-Alab al-Ilmi fariwatun ala kulli muslim. That searching for knowledge is obligatory upon every muslim. This is what Prophet said, every muslim, male or female. Every muslim Prophet said, then you today, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? You have to take every necessary step to look for the knowledge, to seek for the knowledge of your religion. Are you too old? I don't think no one is older than Abu Bakr here eh? when Islam was introduced. No one is older than Abu Bakr here. Prophet was 40. When he was called to prophethood, he was 40 years. Today, when a 40 year somebody in our society, Kai, very rare, go out in search of knowledge. It's very rare. Prophet was 40, but still, Quran was revealed to him. He memorized it, he received the explanation, and he explained it to the society. Abakar was 37. He was 37 when Islam was introduced. He was 37. Despite that, Wallahi, none of the companion of the Prophet is more knowledgeable than Abu Bakr. Wallahi, none of the companion of the Prophet وسلم, is more knowledgeable than Abu Bakr. Come to Quran, he's a master in Quran. He memorizes it, he knows where it is revealed. Alhamdulillah, he took his own portion from it. Go out in search of knowledge. No age limitation. Al ilm min al mahd il al is from cradle to grave. Searching for knowledge is from cradle to grave. Min al mahd il al That is how the Prophet said, Alayhi salatu wa salam. So this is taken from Talabul la ilmi for ibatun ala kulli muslim. Seeking for knowledge is obligatory upon every Muslim. So you have to go out in search of knowledge. But in this environment today, to some extent, you are limited. You came here for a program, right? So despite you are here for a program, then let there be religious attachment. Do you understand? 
Let there be, let there be religious attachment. We serve our religion through our school. There are stars, scholars among us. Reach them so that you can learn from them. Outside this uh, school environment, in the town there, you can see people to teach you religion. Look for a pious somebody. Somebody who know that he will not follow his own whims, desires. Learn from that person so that you boost your religious life. This is what this Adin is explaining to us. And the vicious of knowledge can never be overemphasized. Some of them have been saved from the media house. The vicious of seeking for what? For knowledge is many, even in the Quran, is many in the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi wa alayhi wa sallam. Look, among the vicious of seeking for knowledge, do you know that Allah be a witness to one particular thing? And uh, he called his angels to bear him witness. The next people he called is all the enemy, the scholars, those who have knowledge. And I said, Shaykh in Allah, and now La ilaha illallah. Allah Himself, He bear witness that none is worthy to be worshipped except Him. He Himself, He has bear this witness. It means whether you bear witness or you don't bear witness, you understand? You are your own. Allah has bear witness that for Him, He created everything. Nothing is there before Him, and everything will perish. Nothing is going to be there after him. He decides what to be there and what not to be there. He decided it. And he himself has been witness that he is alone and he don't have a partner. What is he doing with your own testimony? What is Allah doing with your testimony? Nothing. Your testimony will only benefit you. You testifying that none has the right to worship except Allah benefits you alone. La yazidu wa it has nothing to add to the dominion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His kingdom is perfect. He designed it the way you like it. Your action cannot add anything to it. Your obedience cannot add, add anything to his kingdom. Likewise, your disobedience will not what? add anything to his kingdom or reduce anything from his kingdom. Allah himself has been witness. شهد الله أنه لا إله إلا الله والملائكة and the angels had their witness وعلو العلم and the scholars the people of knowledge Allah bear witness angels bear witness who again so it's not everybody it's scholars that bear witness because among us here there are people that say لا إله إلا الله with their mouth but check their actions check their speech they are lying. Among us here, maybe I don't pray so. There are people that are still believe in the devil. That they can harm him and they can benefit him. You can see that the Allah in the law, the understand, is shaking. It's not perfect, it's not completed at all. If you die with such aqeedah, such creed in your mind, subhanAllah, it's not going to be easy for you. In your grave and on the of judgment. For all the ilm, those who have knowledge, but if you believe in Allah with knowledge, what you believe in, you have the knowledge, nothing. That knowledge is so firm that nothing can come and change it. That is why you have to go out in search of knowledge. You may think you are a believer, but there are things you engage yourself. That nullify the la ilaha is Allah. It nullifies it. But you don't know. You still think you are a believer. That is why you have to go out in search of knowledge. So, one of the visions of scholars seeking for knowledge is they, will bear with, they have bear witness. Allah called them to testify, to give the testification of la ilaha is Allah. And they have testified. They are still testifying. They will continue to testify until their last day, the scholars. Because they have, they have seen the reality of La ilaha illallah. 
They have seen the benefit of La ilaha illallah. So they will never go back from it, no matter what condition, even if the heaven will fall. If you are not like that, it means you don't have firm belief. Your atida, your iman, is not firm up till now. Can you check on Bilal? Bilal bin Riba, what is Allah I think you have recorded his story. By mentioning his name, you have recorded his story. Bilal, the Muaddin of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Do you remember what happened to him? At the initial stage of his life, when he embraced Islam, the initial stage of his Islam, do you recall what happens to him? All effort played by his master so that he can denounce his belief. Did he agree? No. He continued to say, Ahad, Ahad. Because the reality has come to him. Ula'ika kataba fi qulubihim al iman wa zayyanahu fi qulubihim. Because his iman is so firm that even if the heaven should fall, his iman will not shed. He prefers losing his life than denouncing the truth he has understood. Now, you, have you attained the reality of La ilaha illallah? That kalima you are saying from your mouth, that word you are pronouncing every now and then, at least a believer every day from his house, he go to where he seeks for knowledge. That way you are following. Allah said you made, you made that way easy for you down to agenda. That is your way to agenda. That is what Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam. Now, maybe in this way that Prophet said, it, it has many attachments. It has many attachments. Whoever paved a way, passing through it, to go and seek, seek for knowledge, this way you paved, the Prophet said you paved, there are several attachments to it. It might be your own, you sit down every day, you watch television, the sites, the station, which uh, the preach Islam. You have to listen every day you made it compulsory on yourself. You must increase your knowledge about Islam. Uh, maybe from the television, maybe from listening to radio cassettes, going to Dawa. Dawa, where Islamic program is being staged. You go there, you listen to the preaching, the admonitions that is going on here. You listen to it. All this is inclusive. Oh no, you are the type that every day you pick up your Islamic books that you are learning. You go to a scholar, you learn from him. It's still part of what the Prophet is saying. Man salaka tariqan, yal tamis to be him, el man. Or you go to masjid every day, you listen to Imam. Man salaka tariqan, all is inclusive. Part of the vicious. Do you know that Allah elevates, rises the status of scholars? Can you become a scholar without seeking for knowledge? You cannot. Do you know that if you have attained knowledge, Allah has raised your status in the society? Allah said, those who believe among you, Allah will raise their status huh? over the unbelievers. وَالَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْإِلْمَ دَرَجَانَ And those who attain knowledge, the scholars among God, their own status will be higher than the ordinary believers. So you can see the society, Allah has divided it into three now. The unbeliever, the believer, and the scholar. Isn't it? So the unbeliever, they are low. They are the low stage of the society. Even if they are building mansions. Even if they are wealthy. They don't have any status in the society because their status is not recognized by Allah. Any status not recognized by Allah is not status at all. So you can see the unbelievers in the society, they are inferior before the believers. So the believers are above them. Then the scholars are above everybody. It's Allah that is above the scholar. For every possessor of knowledge, there is one more learned, right? There is one more learned. No matter how learned you are, there is somebody who is learned than you. 
and the most learned among the human. Allah is learned than him. Who taught him the knowledge? Is Allah that gave him the knowledge because he knows everything? Is anyone here? Do you have the knowledge of the unseen? What will happen in the next one second? Are you aware? You are not, but Allah is aware. Who is Allah? He is given the knowledge. Allah. Mahfumada, that is one of his name and attributes. Who is Allah? Your own knowledge has beginning. What about that of Allah? His knowledge has beginning. If his knowledge has beginning, it means he himself he has beginning. And if he has beginning, he don't want to be Allah. Anything that has beginning is not Allah. So Allah is al awwal wal awwal wal akhir wal wadir wal baqir. Who al awwal? Allah is the best. He is the beginning. His beginning has no beginning. Who al akhir? He is the end. His ending has no end. But you have beginning and you have what? And everything in your life has beginning, right? Even your knowledge has beginning. There was a time in your life you were not enrolled in school, right? By then, do you know anything? You don't know anything. So if you want your status to be raised in the society, before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, go out in search of knowledge. Attempt Islamic programs. Again, attaining knowledge is a sign that Allah loves you. One who go out in search of knowledge every now and then is a sign that Allah loves that person. One who feel reluctant, who stay back and don't go out in search of knowledge, precisely Islamic knowledge, is a sign that Allah is angry with that person. It's a sign. If you are a type that you don't go to Islamic programs, you don't ask questions, you don't go out, you go and learn the same. Go and learn. If you are a type that you don't go out in learning, for learning, it means Allah is angry with you. Because Prophet said, when you read in love with the khayran, you fakir with him. Whoever Allah wish with gold, if Allah wish you with gold, you fakir with him. He will give you, he will give you the understanding of your religion. Can you step back in your home and have understanding? You have to go out here, mingle with people of knowledge. That is when you can have the understanding of what? Of Islam, your religion. And when you go out in search of knowledge, it means Allah loves you and he wish good for you. That is why even if somebody is searching for knowledge, seeking for knowledge every now and then, but you still see him in some minor mistakes, you understand? He is better than you still. He is better than you still. Because one day, one time, it's Allah that wish him with go, that is going out in search of that knowledge. One day, one time, Allah will correct that mistake with him. Maybe he used to drink. One day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will help him and he will put a stop to his drinking. He will not take alcohol again. Maybe he used to hang out with what? Yes, I mean, when he still go to Islamia, he has hope. He has hope more than the person that is not well, is not going out in search of knowledge. Because since he still go out in search, it means Allah wishing with good. Isn't it? One day, Allah will take him out of it. Because some persons here will tell us, okay, uh, after this year, if I stop hanging out with women, then I'll pick up my Islamia books to go and let know. Fight yourself not to hang out with women. But you are still hanging out, still go to Islamia. Go and learn. Through that, Allah will put a stop to it, inshallah. Here comes the story. There is a companion of the, the Prophet called Mirta. He's a companion. Milton, he used to take alcohol, but he really understands his religion. Whenever he takes, he will be flogged, he will be punished. They used to punish him. Down to the time of Sayyidina Umar, 
When he takes alcohol, Sayyidina Omar will punish him. One day they went out in Jihad, in one of the Islamic battles. When Saul bin Abi Waqqas, Rabbi Allah Anhu, who was the commander of the believers then, he led the Muslim army, Saadul bin Abi Waqqas, who was the one that led the Muslim army. When they came to their tent, they lodged him. Tomorrow is what? Tomorrow is the battle. It's the great day. Then, the day has arrived, me then went and took alcohol again. SubhanAllah. Just some hours for the battle to begin, me then took alcohol again. Saad so said they should go and lock him. They have to chain him. They should chain his leg. After the battle, they will punish him. Then Minton was chained. The battle began. He himself will start hearing the sound of the sword, the sword, the sound of the sword from the battlefield, and the chanting of reinforcement statement from who? The soldiers. Minton started to hear it. SubhanAllah. And Minton is a warrior. He's a warrior. Minton can handle a hundred of soldiers. Himself, only him. You understand? He can handle, I think, a hundred of soldiers is on the battalion. Have you? Milton alone can handle a battalion of enemy. He's a warrior. He started feeling, you understand, the pain of the chain. Why is he not in battlefield? He started longing for him to become a mataya. La ilaha illallah. A drunkard still understand that there is something called martyrdom in Islam. That if you should attain it, you are in the peak of Al Jannah. This drunkard, he still recognizes that yes, there is a highest place in Al Jannah which he can end through the battlefield. So he was feeling that pain. He now called out the wife of Saad bin Abi Waqqas. He said, please, do you want some good? Do you want Allah to give you a good reward? That is what he started saying to the wife of Saad bin Abi Waqqas. Then the wife said, what is that? He said, please, untie me, unchain me. Let me go to the battlefield. Then follow me, eh, the camel of your master, of your, your husband, which is the camel of Sam, called Balqa. The name of his camel is called Balqa. Let me his camel. Let me go and face the battlefield. I promise you, if I did not die, I'll still come back and put the chain on my leg myself. I'll not betray you. The wife said, no, I will not want to change it. Then, he now organized a, a shared poetry. He organized a poetry, a poet, you understand? Uh, and he chanted it. That poet is saying the importance of going out in jihad, and that how he don't like the kind of life he's living. Here he said he's a wealthy man, but everybody abandoned him because he's a drunkard. He's living his life alone. Today, you want to face the battlefield. Please, I promise you, if you unchain me, I will never go closer to alcohol again in my life. I will never take alcohol again if you unchain me. By hearing this, why was he chained? And now he promised not to take it again. Isn't it? The wife unchained him and give him the belka, the camel, uh, uh, the camel of his master, of her husband, right? Which is Saad. You know, Saad is the commander. The race is on tent. He's at the top. You understand? Observing the battlefield. So that wherever need reinforcement, you send soldiers to there. He was observing the battlefield. So that is why he did not go to the battle himself. He was there, but what? Commanding, observing. Then 
Me Peter now took the camel. He arrived the battlefield. When immediately he arrived, everything changed. Immediately he arrived, everything changed. Then Saad was watching him from up. He said, if not because I knew that Milton is changed here in the room, I would have said this is Milton. And if not because I know that my Belkar, you understand, is tied here, I could have said this is Belkar. Because Belkar, as you are on it fighting, eh, it, it itself is fighting. Belkar. Belkar too is a warrior. Belkar has fought for Islam. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. Then everything changes. When you, then after the battle, Saad immediately descended from his own throne there and went to where uh, Milton was changed. And he met him again changed. <laughs> <laughs> then he went and checked on his Belkar. Belkar is tied. He's there. But this time around, he is sure that he saw Milton. But Allah said, because uh, he started working. He said, well, Allah, after today, I will never punish you on taking alcohol again. Then me, they say, well, Allah, after today, I will never take alcohol again. <laughs> now, why did I bring this story? You hang out with it again, isn't it? You say, inshallah, after I'll stop hanging out, right? Then I'll start learning. No, start to learn now. That learning will lead you to live that life. That learning will put a stop to that word. Because the learning, do you know why Shaitan is chaining you down from learning? Because knowledge is the only weapon you can fight Shaitan with. As you see Shaitan, he don't, clo he don't go closer to the knowledge of this class. Because he knows he cannot just dare them. And they have shield, they have protection from him. The scholars. So Shaitan will try his possible best not to do what? Not to allow you to go and learn. That is why you are in the hostel doing what's up? Facebook, uh, TikTok, Instagram, whatever, why Islamic program is going on. Okay, let me reply to these messages before I go. Before you reply to that one, another bunch of messages will come. Before you reply, another one will come until the program is off. SubhanAllah. And you miss everything. Then you ask yourself, what have you achieved in doing wasa and ignoring the Islamic program? That is when you start to ask yourself. So go out in search of knowledge. There are a lot of advantages attached to it. Uh, Inshallah. Majalis will end. The gathering of knowledge is the highest gathering in the world. The gathering is the highest and the most vicious gathering in the world. Gathering of knowledge. Allah Himself regarded it. In a hadith of what to say, He said, Majdama Akumun fi baitin nimbu yutilla. Yet Luna Ayatilla, where Tadara Suna who by Nahu, Illa Nazalet Alehim, a Sakina, where her fatum, a Rahma, where her fatum and Malaida. He said, There is never a time, there is never a time, Majdama Akumun, that a group of people will gather, inviting in one of the houses of Allah on earth. Where is the house of Allah? Al Masjid first, mosque first, and any other place, even if it is not built as hall, even if it is a hall like this. Why do we gather here? Because of Allah. Now, this moment, this hall belongs to who? Allah. It's regarded as a house from among the houses of who? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said there is never a time a set of people, a group of people will gather in one of the houses of Allah. Reading Quran, yet Luna Ayatullah, reading the verses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where Tadara Sunahu, Bainahu, and learning it 
within their soul. Please, what is the meaning of this verse? Please, what is the meaning of this hadith? Or one is reciting and one is explaining. There is never a time people who engage in an activity like this. Except tranquility will descend on them. Nazareth Arehim as Sakina. Tranquility will descend on such type of people. Do you know what it means for the tranquility to descend on you? Immediately you forget all your worries. Immediately, if tranquility descend on you, immediately all your worries, you forget about it. Immediately you will feel deep in your heart that all your worry, Allah Akbar, Allah is more than it. Allah is bigger, is higher, is mightier than my worries. And he can take care of it for me. Where do you get that from? From a group, from gathering of length. Nazareth Alayhi Sakina. Tranquility will descend on you. Also, the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will surround you. Also, the angels will circle you with their wings, protecting you from the devils, the satan, those who come here and distract your mind. That is why the angels are here. That is why they circle you. Because even in the garden of knowledge, satan will try their arm. Uh -uh. Do you forget you have a promise with a girl? You are sitting listening to a lecture. Satan will whisper into your heart. Uh -huh. You have a promise to move to so-so person at so-so time. This is the time now. She will get provoked. After today, no chance for you again. Whispering. Shaitan will whisper into your heart. But when you are sitting there, Allah will send angels. They will circle you. So that those Jazakumullah khairan. Thank you very much. Please don't forget to subscribe, like, share, comment, and click on the notification bell. Thank you. Thank you.